Nicola Dolo showed once again why the Reds have a bright future at the top of their starting rotation, and the lineup showed why the Reds' pitching must be very stingy the rest of the way if they hope to win any of these games. Plus, Moose is back on the IL, and we'll tell you when we think we'll see him again. That's all coming up on today's Locked On Reds. You are Locked On Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Reds. Thanks for making Locked On Reds your first listen of the day. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, and we are free and available on all podcasting platforms. I'm your host, Stephen Offenbaker, alongside Jeff Carr, and we both have a passion for baseball. We have a passion for the Cincinnati Reds, and we have taken that passion, and we have turned it into information for you on today's podcast we are going to talk about another fantastic start from nick lodolo we're also going to take a look at this reds lineup and tell you uh, places that it can improve places it's been bad and in a couple places even where it's been pretty good uh, we're going to wrap up today's show by talking a little bit about mike moustakas being once again on the injured list and what it means for the reds for the rest of the 2022 baseball season but Jeff let's start with something really positive and that of course is uh, the most recent start and really the season thus far for one Nick Lodolo he absolutely had it working again Steve it was the second any or second outing of his season where he's gotten seven innings I, I love to see that and especially when you look at the fact that you know, in the fourth inning, he ran into some trouble, had a couple of hit batsmen, gave up some runs and things like that. But overall, just another good start. You will take seven innings of three run ball every time out. No, oh, no question. And, you know, even even the negatives in that game, you know, he did give up the home run. Uh, you know, that is what it is. He, he left one out where they could get it, but he really did get hosed on. Uh, a couple different situations one with walking that runner home i mean i don't know how he could have thrown that pitch any better uh, if that pitch was any more in the strike zone it would have got tagged it was in the perfect location to be a strike and be unhittable and he just didn't get the call there's gonna come a show steve where we kind of discuss like robot umps or robot strike zones or whatever like that we're not gonna do it here but yeah it's times like that where i really start to think about that sort of thing because yeah nicola dolo made a great pitch and he got completely hosed on it and it's interesting to note that you know th in this game if you look at baseball savant and stack cast and things like that the breakdown was you know he had a sinker and a curveball and he was working on his changeup, and that was something that david bell talked a little bit about after the game is that despite how good he's looked this year he's still working full year of uh of development but more importantly i mean you know he's just really shown what he's capable of at this level and um the great thing about nick you know i just talking to him a couple of days ago he's he's still working and searching on on um you know improving and, and getting better um so he's definitely not satisfied um, we saw a couple good change-ups just as an example of something that he's working on to get better. Uh, so, But it's been a really successful year for him. I know that he had the injury, um, which is a little bit of a setback, but uh, you know, I think he's really set up to finish strong. This dude eats, sleeps, breathes pitching, Steve. Like, I, I think that, honestly, he's obviously shown with his performance, but just so many reasons why the future is super bright for Nick Lodolo. You know, you had the opportunity to, I don't know if interact with him is the right word, but you were down there at the ballpark for one of those uh, season ticket holder functions, and mm -hmm. you got an opportunity to hear directly from him. Uh, does does what you took away from, from hearing him talk about pitching line up with what David Bell just said there in that clip as far as his work on continuing to develop as a pitcher? 100%. I, I think he's a sponge, honestly. Like, I think Derek Johnson's probably got to love him and being able to teach him in different bullpen sessions and things like that. Because, you know, it, you'd have uh, different kids asking questions, like kids ask a baseball player questions and things like that. And really, every time he said, oh, yeah, you know, I don't really – watch movies or play games or listen to music like i just kept coming away from every answer like he pitches that's what he does like he wakes up he pitches he eats he sleeps 
and he does it all again the next day. Like that's just who Nick Lodolo is. And he shows it every time out. Like you see him make improvements. I, I still go back to that start that he had in St. Louis where he was awful. And then the next five starts, he was phenomenal because he looked at that and he's like, how do I learn? What do I take away from this? Boom. Got it. There was a lot in that clip you played of David Bell that I think resonates. Uh, mm -hmm. He talked about Nick continuing to work and you know not being complacent, continuing try to, to try and get better. And I think if you talk about any of the greats in the game right now, any number one, number two starting pitchers, uh, whether we're talking about a Nick Lodolo or we're talking about a guy like Max Scherzer or we're talking about you know Justin Verlander or we're talking about you know Clayton Kershaw. All of those pitchers will tell you the same thing. They're constantly trying to evolve their game. They're constantly right. trying to learn and find a hitter's weakness and watching film and doing things to get better. Uh, they don't ever become complacent. And I think that that is very important to hear early that Nick has already developed that habit and is continuing to work in that manner. Yeah, because I, I think that baseball is a game of adjustments if you stop adjusting we we've seen it with multiple players if you stop adjusting then the league passes you up aristides aquino I, I will forever use him as an example especially after what barry larkin said about him he comes up very first month he plays full month that he plays for the reds he just sets the world on fire pitchers adjust he hasn't adjusted and you still have not seen consistent success for him at the plate and and one of the things that I've been looking at, because, you know, they talked about it on the broadcast, his last seven starts overall have just been absolutely phenomenal. And you've got all these different numbers, like, you know, 30, uh, or sorry, 3.32 uh, ERA. You got 44 strikeouts and 40 and two thirds innings. But honestly, the number that gets me and the number that I think just shows how different he is as a rookie is that. 62%, roughly thereabouts, it's probably a little bit more than that, actually, but 62% of the pitches that he has thrown over his last seven starts have been strikes. That's the kind of thing that, you know, I, I think they talk about it a lot with Hunter Green, like you can throw too many strikes, but you can definitely throw too few strikes, as we've seen with other pitching prospects that the Reds have had come through the system, and he has absolutely made it work to his advantage. You know, the other thing in his numbers in that time frame that you're talking about that jumps out to me, Jeff, is he's only allowed three home runs. He's kept the ball yeah. out of the air. And, you know, for a pitcher that's going to spend a lot of time at Great American Ballpark, it's important to keep that ball out of the air. So I'm, I'm really happy to see that, that he's getting the ground balls. He's keeping it in the yard. He's letting his defense, God help us, help him as much as possible. <laughs> and he's continuing to develop forward in that direction. It's interesting you mentioned that, uh, letting the defense help you and, and work with you a little bit, because I have a question for you. As good as Nick Lodolo has been, who are you taking between him and Graham Ashcraft this year, just their performance this year? Mm. And this is a longer okay. conversation. This is, this is not yeah. how you, this is not how you <laughs> presented this in the, the rundown earlier. Um, I have to think now. No, you know what? I'm taking Nick Lodolo if we're talking about how they've performed this year. Ashcraft is a close second. Um, what you asked me in the rundown was who had the better season. And I think that's a different answer just in that Nick Lodolo is doing what I expected him to do. This is not anything out of the ordinary that, you know, basically, you know, it's a kind of not fair, but Nick gets a pat on the back and, you know, way to do what we expected you to do. Nice. Graham Ashcraft, on the other hand, I didn't expect any of this from him. So you want to talk to him right. when I talk about how he's performed this year, I'm like, wow, Graham, good job. Let me buy you a beer. Fantastic. And meanwhile, Adolo's in the corner going, Hey, what about me? But <laughs> so it's a different question, but if I've got to pick one of them if, to make a, a start tomorrow, I can choose either one. I'm taking Lodolo in that start. I would agree. And, and I think you nailed it too. Like Ashcraft a couple of years ago, even on prospect lists was in like the mid twenties for the reds. Like he was, he was, it was kind of like, yeah, this guy's down there. He's, he's okay. We'll see what he, what he has coming up. And now he is a bona fide top three starter for this team moving forward. And, and, you know, I mean, maybe there's a guy that comes up and he's even more talented and maybe he moves down to the four spot, but I don't ever foresee somebody pitching well enough to knock him out of the rotation because Graham Ashcraft has been phenomenal. No, I, I agree. Um, as much pitching talent as the Reds have acquired, I think it's staggered in such a way uh, that 
Ashcraft will not lose his spot in the rotation um, until we get to that dreaded day where they talk about trading trading him based on the time he has left. But uh, as long as he is a red, I think he's a starter in this rotation. And I think that's a really good, the, just the overarching thought, like you said, of like coming out of nowhere, not having the high expectations that Lodolo has, definitely a point in his favor. We are going to dive into that a lot deeper in the off season as we kind of you know sit down and really dissect the numbers on these two guys because I think that's gonna be that's gonna be a fun episode when we get the chance to do that. But one thing is for certain, Steve, the top of this rotation has a very bright future. All right, coming up, we're gonna look at the Reds line. Uh, they had a solid weekend, um, but pretty much they've limped through the schedule post trade deadline. Uh, we, we'll tell you why that is coming up next but first uh are you one of those people who thinks it's okay to drive stoned what's the worst that could happen right you could end up driving below the speed limit mm, it's no big deal right wrong the truth is your reaction time slows way down when you're high just like i'm reading this ad you not only put yourself in danger, but everyone around you. Talk about a buzzkill. Stop kidding yourself. It's not okay to drive high. If you've been using marijuana in any form, do not get behind the wheel. If you feel different, you drive different. Drive high, get a DUI. Coming up on tomorrow's podcast, we'll dive into Jonathan India's recent performance. It really his sophomore year as a whole. It's been not the way he would have drawn it up, but here recently we've seen more of the Jonathan India from his rookie of the year campaign that we expected to see. You're not going to miss that. The best way to not miss that is to subscribe on your favorite platform, whether it's YouTube or on your favorite podcasting app, because we are locked on Reds and we bring you your team every day thanks to the Locked On Podcast Network. All right, Steve, let's do this because it's something that honestly, I don't know that I want to talk a lot about over the rest of this season because, good Lord, I almost get up and, you know, get another pop or something during the uh, time that the Reds are batting. But the Reds lineup, uh, it, uh, oof. <laughs> it's okay, yes, but it's not – it's not as bad as one would think just with the eye test. Uh, you know, there yes. has been some yeah. tough stretches of baseball. There has been some difficult games to watch, but this team is still doing some things. Let's talk about since the trade deadline, when the team was, was really blown up and the white flag was waved. Uh, mm -hmm. They've scored 85 runs since then. That's good for almost just shy, just under four runs a game, 3.9 runs per game. Now that's not terrible, Jeff. I mean, they're scoring some runs and while you would like to see them closer to averaging five runs a game, uh, this is not that bad. No, it's, it's not. And I even told you that when I was looking up these numbers that thinking of watching this team and letting Patrick Corbin just absolutely where Patrick Corbin had an ERA over six coming into this game, like seriously, but anyway, yeah. And then he breaks the streak of national starting pitchers, not getting a win and all that other stuff, which that's all well and good, but not that huge a deal, but yeah, they've not been near as bad as I thought. Now, the one thing that I will say, and it's something that's plagued them all year long is that they are fourth highest in strikeout percentage. Uh, they're striking out just a smidge over one out of every four at bats. That that's a little bit rough, but well, this is a yeah. lineup that has Aristides Aquino getting the majority of starts in the outfield. <laughs> that's going to raise your K percentage by a bunch of percentage points just right there. Add in the yeah. fact that they've got a shortstop that's learning on the job who's also Kaying uh, more than your average everyday guy running out there. Uh, that does not surprise me at all that they're fourth highest when you take those two things into account. I'd have been interested to dive into the, I should have dove in a little bit more and see just how much of the, the percentage of red strikeouts is Jose Barrera and Aristides Aquino. Cause I got to believe it's a lot, but uh, yeah, they, they've been okay. The, the thing that I've noticed, I'm just like, look, if reds pitching can do well, they can't expect a shootout, but if they can pitch well enough to only allow like three runs, reds got a really good shot to win 
that game. Now, I will say this, though, Steve, because one of the things we like to do whenever we look at certain statistics, whether it's bad or good, we try to verify them with the whole peripherals at Baseball Savant over at StatCast and seeing what they've got. StatCast does not like the Reds lineup. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Dead it's, last um, in weighted yeah. on base average. Barrel percentage. Oof. Hard hit percentage. Oof. Average exit velocity. Mm. Expected batting average. And expected slugging percentage. Literally, I don't know another stat that we're talking about here that's really going to be like, well, maybe. <laughs> like, that's all. And it's, 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 bot, it's the bottom. Like, no, nobody's below them. The, the Reds are the bottom in all of those uh, stat categories. All right, listen, um, I've had about enough of this this bring down from you. You're the one we rely on for for feel good and optimism. <laughs> yes. I'm supposed to be the one that poo-poos on your ideas. So <laughs> let's let's break out of this right now. I want you right now to find something good about this lineup to talk about. Well, I'll tell you what. Best hitter in the lineup is a Red who was acquired this past offseason. Rake. Fraley. He has been phenomenal this month in 86 plate appearances, and he's done a very good job walking. So it's only been like 68 at bats, but dude has been phenomenal. He has a slash line at 279, getting on base uh, 37, just a little bit over 37% of the time, and he's slugging 544. He's got the most homers on the team, Steve, absolutely in, in this month, and the most RBIs. Just a phenomenal month for Rake Fraley. You know, since he came back from his tour of Louisville and his rehabilitation and, and really got back into this lineup, I think that he is, he has really been impressive. He has really been a pleasant surprise in what has been, uh, you know, an otherwise pretty dismal uh, offensive situation for the Reds. You know, and another guy right now in the lineup, I think fits that mold as well. And that's TJ Friedel. If you've, yeah. if you've watched Friedel a little bit since his return, I, I see a lot of similarities between how Fraley looked in his return from Louisville and how Friedel looked right now in his return from Louisville. I agree. He has, uh, you know, about less than half of the plate appearances of Jake Fraley, which is why I didn't really give him the title of best hitter this month, but in 36 plate appearances, he's got an OPS of 1033 or 333. That's a lot. I can't even say how high the number is because I just messed it up. And he's one of only three other reds other than Jake Fraley, who's not named Jake Fraley, who has multiple home runs this month. And that even includes the fact that Jose Barrero had a multi homer game. Those are the only two home runs he has all month. TJ Friedel with two homers. And then you also have, where was it? I just lost it. Uh, Kyle Farmer. Kyle Farmer has two home runs as well. That's it. That's the list of Reds with multiple home runs this month. That's where we go with this hitting. But I, I'm with you. I've been very pleasantly surprised with TJ Friedel. And I, I would love to see more of him. I'm glad that we're getting this shot here to see what he can do for the Reds on an almost everyday basis. Well, you know, I think the playing time uh, is only going to continue to to help him get better. Uh, he he's another one of those younger guys that this is prime opportunity for them to really demonstrate what it is they can bring to the team, what value they offer to consider keeping them around uh, in 2023 and beyond as this team grows into its new young core. And I think, you know, we've talked a lot about there's a lot of fourth outfielders on this team and there's not going to be room for all of them. So this is valuable time right now for these guys to, to really lock themselves into being able to stick around when inevitably the Reds start moving infielders to the outfield to get all of those bats in the lineup at the same time. All right, Steve, pop quiz. I mentioned that Jake Fraley leads the team in RBIs this month. He has 11 RBIs. In fact, he shares that distinction with one other red. Who is it? Nick Senzel. No. I'll give you a hint. We have mentioned his name so far on this podcast. God, I hate it when you do this to me. Um, <laughs> Kyle Farmer. Sadly, no. Guy who's batting third does not have the team lead in RBIs this month. In fact, Cal Farmer only has seven RBIs this month. My only other guess would be Jonathan India then, and you're going to have to tell me the answer. 
Aristides Aquino. You are making that up. You cannot use RBIs. fake statistics on this podcast. <laughs> I will not stand for it. Well, and, and see, this is this is it, right? Like this is where different statisticians talk about RBIs are fine. But RBIs do not tell you the extent of the talent of the guy at the plate because so we all know Aristides Aquino has no business in the batter's box. So you're not telling me that Aristides Aquino is the next Tony Perez? Is that what you're saying right <laughs> no. now? No, 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 no. And I know that's an argument that we can fall into with Joey Votto over Tony Perez. But yeah, no, when it when it comes to this right here, we're talking about Aristides Aquino and his a buck 86 batting average. Somehow, I I would have to go back. I, I don't know where those 11 RBIs came from. That's, I think somebody fudged the numbers on this one. <laughs> Here's the big takeaway, Jeff. <laughs> Bottom line, this Cincinnati Reds team is going to win games 2-1, to 3-2, to two, something like that. They're not going to win them 5-4. to four. Uh, They're just not going to score that much. And no. uh, if they're going to get wins, it's going to have to be low-scoring affairs. Thank you, Nick Lodolo. Coming up, Amen. we are going to talk about the fact that Moose has landed himself once again on the injured list. Uh, Jeff and I are going to tell you how that kind of impacts the rest of the season and for how long Mike Moustakis can expect to be gone this time. We're going to get into all of that right after this. You can follow the podcast on all podcasting platforms, including YouTube. Make sure you have clicked those subscribe buttons on whatever your favorite audio podcasting app is and click that subscribe button on YouTube and click the little bell as well so you get notified every time we drop an episode, every time we go live, or every time there's something special there for you. You won't miss any of it if you've clicked that bell. Also, make sure you are following us on Twitter. You can follow me at S. Offenbaker. That's with two Fs. You can follow Jeff at Jeff Carr. That's Jeff with three Fs because spelling has always been hard for him. You can also follow the show at Locked on Reds. There's no Fs in that. Again, make sure you subscribe on all of the podcasting platforms. All right, Jeff, Mike Moustakis has once again found himself landed on the injury list. Twitter was not kind to him when this happened again. I think my favorite one was find yourself a girl that loves you as much as Mike Moustakis <laughs> loves the injury list. Twitter was not kind. Uh, Mike Moustakis, again, re-injuring that calf that had him sidelined just a few weeks ago. Right, and it's you mentioned too. There was an article that said that he has been hurt for close to forty percent, maybe a little bit over forty percent at this point, um, or by the end of the season of his contract as a Red. Like, and, and it still boggles my mind as well. Like in two years in Milwaukee, he still has more games played than he has in three years in Cincinnati. I mean, I, I think just, that I think that tells you everything you need to know yep. about how this contract has worked out. Look, there were none of us that really criticized this deal when Dick Williams went out and made it. We thought, That's okay, happy. this this guy is going to be a valuable addition to the lineup, and it just hasn't worked out. Sometimes in free agent baseball. That's the way it goes. I'm not mad at Mike Moustakis. I think he wants to be out there. He wants to be contributing. He wants yeah. to be a valuable member of this team. And the sad, simple truth is that's not going to happen this year. Uh, this injury, it's a grade two sprain of that calf muscle. Uh, what that means is it's an incomplete tear of a muscle. Listen, every sprain is a tear. It's just about degrees. You know, a grade one, it's a little minor sprain, a little minor tear, not a big deal. Grade two, it's an incomplete tear, but it means that you can't use the affected part of your body without the risk of significant injury. Uh, what that tells me is that now that we are about to turn the calendar to September, now that we're in a season where the Reds are not competing for pretty much anything at all, uh, Mike Moustakis is done for the year. We are not going to see him back in a big league lineup in 2022. Yeah, and, and next comes the unfun conversation of will he break camp with this team? But that is something we will kick the can down the road on because right now we got to figure out who's playing first base because Moose was the plan. He was installed there right after Joey went on the IL. So now the Reds in his stead have called up Spencer. No, Colin Moran. Okay, a couple things. We might not be completely having the book closed on Spencer Steer getting a look. September is just a few days away now as we record this. They could be waiting for that. I still think the best move, given all of the players they have under contract, 
you can keep Colin Moran up. He can be valuable over there at first base against right-handed pitchers. You platoon him with Kyle Farmer when there's a lefty on the mound and you let Spencer Steer start those games at third base. Everybody gets some at bats. It's, it's probably the most effective of a not very good Reds lineup that you're putting onto the field. So you're at least trying, you're giving the team an opportunity to win. Uh, I, I can, I can deal with that lineup through September, uh, but I'm not going to be okay if they don't bring Spencer steer up at all. And it's just farmer at third and Moran at first that, that I'm not okay with. Yeah. Spencer steer just des deserves to be the position player that they call up because let's talk about that for just a moment. If it ain't Spencer steer, who else are they calling up? I mean, and th th there's been surges for uh, Cedrola, Lorenzo Cedrola. There's been surges for Ronnie Dawson, but there's also been just as big, if not uh, even worse. You know, we talk about peaks and valleys. They've had some valleys. Am I imagining that Ronnie Dawson has already been called up once? Wasn't there I some? So. I think it was for like two or three games. Right. Or... Yeah. Yeah. Early so, on, whenever and, Jake Fraley had just hit the IL, yeah. Right. So in that scenario, maybe they bring him up because he's already been up. But beyond that, I mean, I think I think it's Spencer Steer or maybe nobody. I mean, there's no rule that says they have to bring up any extra players. And this team's fondness of playing shorthanded just lends itself going <laughs> right into not bringing anybody up. They don't need the extra bodies. I mean, this team is, is a machine that's so well-oiled that they only need 19 healthy guys. It's fine. <laughs> Our team is on the field, Steve. No, I, I, I have resigned myself and understand why they're not calling up Spencer Steer. I, I, I don't agree with it. I don't think that it's the right move, but I get it from a long view, from a managing uh, future finances move, something like that. But even still, like, in, in, in I have two thoughts. Yes, that makes sense for the future. But also... When you just want to find out what you have in him and Hey, if you don't have anything in him, you don't have to worry about the future, but if you do, then it's a good problem to have. I feel like we're so often too worried about down the road finances and things like that, that we miss out on the talent and maybe, you know, mess up their timeline somehow. I don't know. I, but I, I do agree and, and, and see, um, the long view strategy as to why the reds aren't doing it. I just, I think I said I do agree. I don't agree uh, with well, that. And, you know, I, I mean, I asked him about this directly when I talked to him last week. And if you haven't checked out that interview, it's in your audio feeds and it's on the YouTube channel. Go give it a listen. Go give it a view because uh, Spencer Steer, you know, he, he talked about a lot of things. And I asked him directly, Jeff, what he thought the benefit of a cup of coffee would be. And, and how it would help him in the off season and how it would help him moving forward. And he addressed all of those questions. So, uh, you know, I think that the, the takeaway from, from what he said is that, you know, clearly it would help him be a better ball player at the beginning of next season. If he gets a quick look this season at major league pitching and what it's like to be in the majors and, and just going through all of those processes and getting to know the team and getting to be comfortable so that when next season hits all oh, that's out of the way, he knows some of the guys, he knows how the thing operates. He knows what it's like playing at the major league level. And you don't have to worry about trying to answer those questions and competing for a spot in Goodyear at the same time. It, I think it really would put him on a much more solid footing to just get September in the big leagues. And, and at that point, it really isn't going to implicate his service time or how long the Reds can keep him around because we're only talking about 30 days. They can easily deal with that later if they really feel like they need to do that. Yeah, and, and I, I think that it would only serve to prepare him for kind of like what you said, like, like the other stuff around the game is so often forgotten. I mean, all the different protocols that they go through, even just without everything that happened during the pandemic and stuff like that, but all of the, the travel protocols and all the different stuff that they go through in the locker room and things like that, like something that you kind of need to experience. And I think it's probably like riding a bike. Like once you do it the first time, then you're all right with it. You're comfortable with it, but he's got to do it. And I think that they would only benefit from calling them up. I don't know. I'd like to see it, but yeah, I've seen the other side of the argument and I can't really say that that's a terrible point of view either. I just, you know, I'm, I'm like an incredulous fan. I don't really, I don't really 
like it. And then for that, and for the other roster spot, Jeff, you know, I really think they need to find a pitcher that can eat some innings. I don't care who it is. He doesn't even have to be really that good. He just needs to be able to throw a hundred pitches because this bullpen with them doing this Luis Sessa as a starter situation, they're going, they're, this bullpen is going to wear out. Which I did forget to put this in the rundown, but I did notice over the weekend, they signed Chase Anderson, a um, very, <sighs> Grizzled? He was a yeah. reliever in the Tampa for Tampa, right? Didn't he come from yeah. Tampa? He has been a starter in the past, but he's not necessarily that great. He could fall under the innings eater. Let's just throw him out there and make sure that we're not throwing other guys out there and getting them hurt type guy. They signed him to a minor league deal, but I believe he is going to start actually today against the Cardinals. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. So at least the report that I saw. Yeah. yeah. So I, it could just very well be a case of that second extra roster spot could be filled by say a Hunter green coming off the injured list. Uh, so mm -hmm. we may only get one true triple a player coming up when the rosters expand in September. Right. And, and I think that that's about right. Cause honestly, everybody else in triple a, like, you know, they're working, they're trying to get there, but I don't see a lot of guys that are part of the future of this team that really deserve the call up like Spencer Steer does. But I'll say this. I think that this is a good place to end that because we do have the Cardinals coming up. It's going to be a very tough series. The Cardinals, man, we were looking at those stats beforehand. The Cardinals lineup has been on fire lately and Nicola Dolo will not pitch against them. So boy, boy, I don't know what to expect from these next couple of games, but you can expect that we're going to have you covered right here on the Lockdown Reds podcast. So make sure that you follow us. If this was your first time, make sure you're following the podcast on your favorite app. Make sure you're subscribed right here on YouTube and you have that bell clicked so you get notified whenever we have a new video come up and when we go live and things like that. Now, go check out Lockdown MLB. Sully has you covered on all things league-wide with his unique perspective and a little bit of humor peppered in as well. Uh, he's going to give you about as many 80s movies references as possible that somehow relate to baseball. That's Sully in a nutshell. Check him out, Lockdown MLB, just like Lockdown Reds, free and available on all platforms. Steve, Spencer Steer might be coming up. The lineup might get some hits, and the pitching – well, we've got a lot of guys outside Nick Lodolo that are trying to make a name for themselves. So what's that mean for you and me? It means you and I are going to continue to cover this team. We're going to watch the transactions. We're going to keep everybody updated, and we're going to celebrate when the Reds shock the world and take two of three from the Cardinals at Great American Ballpark because we are locked on Reds every single day.